Um, joining us in Studio B once again, and this is, uh, I feel like, going to become a common theme, Jackson Clough of BYU Baseball, because, frankly, Jackson, you've been really, really awesome this year. So, one, congratulations, and two, welcome back. Hey, thanks. Good to be back. It's been a month. That flew by. And and the last time we were talking to you, you were the third baseman. You were kind of moving around a little bit. Now you're the starting shortstop. Uh, what's changed for you in the last month? You know, it's it's an interesting team. I mean, we got a lot of guys that can play different positions, and I kind of knew that going in. I didn't really know if I'd stick at, at each one. So as the lineup fluctuates and different guys get shots, just kind of ended up. I've moved over to a short, and a couple other guys have filled in at second and third. So it's been fun, though. Are you working on a mustache? Is that a mustache? Come on, don't put it on TV. They can't even see it. <laughs> give me, give me what? Do two, we need to zoom in? To two see weeks it? and for, and some just for men. There's a mustache that I will be ready to go. Give hey, me two Jackson's weeks. Working on a mustache. I like it. A few years ago, there was the mustache mafia on this yeah. team, which you, I think you were a part of, right? In 2016. Was, yeah. Yeah, so you're trying to bring that back? I'm trying to bring it back, man. There's just some good mojo. I was going through some, you know how the Instagram memories pop up? Uh-huh. There's a picture of me posted a couple of times. Like, Damn, that's a good-looking mustache. <laughs> it, took me, it took me a while then, so it's going to take me a while still. Two years, still pretty rough. But Patience we'll, we'll, is everything we'll in this matter. We'll get there. Okay. This is honor code approved. It is, quote, well-groomed. Yes. And it won't go past the corners of the, yeah, the exactly. mouth, All even right. if I tried. You can, <laughs> that's a good Keep problem. Keep your honor, yeah. Jackson, yeah. okay? Because oh, you're dishonorable if it goes past your lip. <laughs> How did you find out you were one of the national players of the week in college baseball? I was actually hitting BP yesterday, and we we turned up the machine on the field to like it's I don't know like 90, and like just working on like being on time for a fastball, and I just swung and missed for like five pitches, and I walk out of the cage, and Coach Lou was like, "Oh, congrats on being you know national player of the week or something like that." I was like, "Man, okay." Good to know. I guess wow. that's, I guess that's how it You're works. Like, I don't feel like it. I just yeah. missed five fastballs. <laughs> Seriously, it was terrible. <laughs> it was bad. Well, it was uh, a heck of a week. And I know that as a team, you wanted to win more. You lost to Utah. You, you, you won Saturday. So you went one and three in the week. But individually, um, you reached base 14 times. Seven walks, seven hits. I mean, uh, walk us through your plate approach last week. You know, I think last week I saw a lot more off speed than I've typically seen throughout the year. And so that being said, a lot of times I'd come up with runners in scoring position in, in like all the games. Um, my teammates are getting on base. And so, you know, it's a lot more off speed. And, you know, it's a lot harder for pitchers to throw strikes when they're trying to feed you a lot of off speed. So I was seeing a lot of pitches out of the zone. And so that's probably why I had so many walks last week. But, um, I went deep in a lot of counts, like a lot of full counts, a lot of two-strike um, approach, and so I was just trying to put the ball in play, really, and worked out for me a couple of times. And one of those was a grand slam? Yeah, that was the one time I didn't actually have two strikes on me last week, I think, and the bases were loaded, and he tried to throw two off-speed pitches, and they were out of the zone, so then 2-0, full count, he's got nowhere else to put me, so I knew he was going to come with a fastball, and I got one and was on time and worked out. Did you know it was gone when you hit it? How long yeah, did it take? I knew it was gone just because it's a pretty short porch in, in, in San Diego. I think it's like 327 down the line or something like that. And I know he hit it pretty well. So the right fielder kind of deked me, though. He looked like he had a beat on it. And I was like, really? Like, that is a long fly <laughs> out. Let, let me enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So. Nine RBIs in that game. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a game like that before? No, I know I haven't, but. Hey, they, they said National Player of the Week. They should have just made National Player of the Day because I got all my stats in one day. <laughs> should have given it to someone else who had to put together a whole week. Jackson Clough of BYU Baseball, the National Player of the Day. That's right. On Saturday. On Saturday. <laughs> There's this idea that the baseball looks bigger when you're on a really hot streak as a hitter. How much truth is there to that? Zero truth. <laughs> there is zero truth to that. <laughs> the baseball is still moving, and it's still hard to be on time. So I think... A lot of it has to do, I mean, success in baseball, I mean, some of it's luck, some of it's um, pitchers making mistakes, and some of it's time, you putting a, a good approach and a good at-bat together. And so I think all of those kind of just combined with my ability to get on base last week, had a little bit of each in each situation. Did you grow up a Cougar fan? Yeah. So did you grow up uh, enjoying kind of the rivalry with BYU and Utah? Because tonight is part two this year. Yeah, I've always had a, a very passionate dislike for the U. I'll say that. Okay, what's your first memory of the rivalry? First memory? Oh, I remember I was watching the, I can't remember what year, but we watched the the football game where we came down to the, the last play. I can't remember if they went for two or if it was a touchdown, but it was a John Beck was back running around. Back to Harleen over there. He catches it on his knees. Yeah, that was, that was probably my first memory that I'm like, okay, let's go. I hate these guys. <laughs> <laughs> how, how old were you in 06? 10. 
You were 10 years old. old. Good yeah. grief. Yeah. Me and my dad are chest bumping up in the, the, the living room, and my mom's just shaking her head. <laughs> I was so into it. Oh, I yeah. would cry when they lost. Yeah. That's like how it was. Well, you should see the two of us after, <laughs> after a game now. Yeah. Uh, describe what it's like to play in the <clears throat> baseball version of this, because the, the story goes in 1895 they met, and it ended in a 0-0 tie with a bench-clearing brawl. Could we see that tonight? I wish. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's fun just because, you know, going through the recruiting process, you know, the coaches on the other side, you know, a lot of the players. I mean, most of the players on Utah's team I played against and I know. And so it's just it's just fun. It's just a, it's a true rivalry because everyone knows each other and we want to win. We want to be the best team in the state. So it's fun. And Utah won last week. Yeah, we don't now have to talk about Provo, it. Now it's in though. Yeah. Round two of three. That's right. Yeah, how much does that kind of work its way into the psyche of how you prepare for a game tonight, knowing that you let one get away in Salt Lake City last week? You know, I mean, I think it's different with every team, but I think this year has been pretty good. Obviously, it was really frustrating last week when we lost, but it was like, I mean, they got more clutch hits than we did, and we didn't, hats off to them, they played well, but we feel like we didn't play to the best of our ability, and so I think we're pretty confident moving forward. I think they're a team that we can handle pretty well. How do emotions play into how you approach a game? Because in baseball, there's so many games, so it might feel less emotion or, or more emotionless because, like, hey, I have a job to do and we got to do it with more volume than other sports. Football, you can take it out, right? Physically. Mm -hmm. So, baseball, how do you harness that emotion into an effective play in a game? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point because baseball is a lot different than, you know, basketball and football is always constant going and you want the adrenaline going. Um, for me, that's been a big thing is figuring out how to slow that down. Coach Littlewood and Coach Proud are always telling me, you know, you know, slow things down. Just play at your pace and, and figure out a way to do that. And so I think that's really what makes you successful in baseball if you're able to just – because at the end of the day, when you're up to bat, it's a one-on-one -on -one versus you and the pitcher. I mean, it's still a team sport, but it comes down to your preparation versus his. And so I think the more successful you are, the, the better you are able to, you know, slow things down and just stay within your approach. It is an interesting uh, team versus individual dynamic for sure. Yeah. Uh, when you look at what the team has accomplished and ranked number 24 last week in one of the major polls, what matters more to you, a national ranking or working on that RPI to try and position for potential inclusion in the NCAA tournament? Oh, without a doubt, the RPI, because our first our first goal is to, to win the West Coast Conference, the regular season and the, the tournament. But if something goes wrong there, you want to position yourself where with your strength of schedule and the important road wins and, and playing well at home that you have a good R RPI so you can get in that large bid because at the end of the day, what the riders have to say and what the rankings say, they don't really mean anything. So. But what we have to say means a lot, right? Of course. We <laughs> BYU baseball values your opinion very Thank much. You. So Thank you. Wherever you put it. us, that's that's But not where the writers. Who cares about the writers? Well, let's give you the BYU Sports Nation karma. Good luck yes. tonight against Utah. Yeah. You can watch or listen uh, here, uh, BYU TV Digital, BYU Radio. And uh, we're looking forward to the next segment, Between the Lines features you that's and cool. your roommates. That's right. You nervous? Yeah, I don't really remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out. We're about to find out. Yeah. We're about to find out. Now, we gave the karma to your coach, Mike Littlewood, last week, and he was great. He was great on the base pass. This is for you and the team. Okay. okay. We Go need take it. Take care of business team. tonight. Yes. Big you one and the tonight. team. Looking forward to it. Thanks it, for coming in, man. Perfect. We'll Thanks. see you in another month. All righty. <laughs>